Thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr. Mickey, in terms of community buy-in, various reports have been released about the rising costs of disaster, uh, the benefits of mitigation, and the need to take steps to mitigate for disasters. So Congress has also um, acted to in, in incentivize mitigation. So, for example, Congress, we authorize uh, FEMA to provide additional hazard mitigation grant program funding to states with enhanced plans yet only 12 states have adopted these. So even with incentives, it's very difficult to get states to take action. How do we get the ideas in your report to the public and private sectors, and what is needed to actually get ideas implemented? Well, I'm happy to say that we've already taken some steps in that direction. Uh, just this past January, the Institute held a symposium here in Washington, D.C. That institute brought, brought together um, experts in the industries that I identified in my testimony uh, for the purpose of discussing exactly what was presented, and more importantly, to share their own ideas for how to incentivize resilience in their respective sectors. The next step that the Institute is currently pursuing is to develop a stakeholder leadership council that consists of the leaders of the various stakeholder groups to include insurance, loan organizations, bond writing organizations, uh, businesses, utilities, homeowners, and, of course, local, state, and federal government. And the goal of that council is going to be uh, to uh, work on formulating the mechanisms for incentivization. The idea that we have is that by getting the buy-in of these stakeholders directly, because they will be the ones coming up with these incentive strategies that others will then follow, and they're going to be incentivized to help build an enhanced economy that does not currently exist for writing insurance, originating loans and bonds, and, and generating construction activity. Ultimately, the goal as we see it is to produce a set of products that consumers want. Let me give you a couple of, of examples that you'll find in our, our full study. Uh, State Farm Insurance offered a, a premium discount in Texas for installation of impact resistant roofs. The result was that products related to impact resistant roofs went from 10 in 1998 to more than 1,000 in the year 2003. And that program has now expanded out into 26 additional states. According to uh, State Farm homeowners, the IRR product, the, enhanced, or the um, impact resistant roof product, is something that they now want. And then just earlier this week in uh, Washington, the mayor of the city of Fairhope, Alabama, uh, Tim Cant, uh, was attending the Resilience Building Codes Forum, and he made a statement that his community is now considered one of the most desirable places to live specifically because their homes are recognized as being more resilient, and that community is one of the places where the Fort Fortified program is found. The Institute is planning to serve the role of identifying these solutions that I've mentioned. We recognize that there are plenty of best practices out there. What we want to do is bring together the stakeholders to identify those best practices and see them replicated across the, the industry. We recognize that costs are high and we're looking for ways to reduce them and we believe that this is a, a creative approach. Ultimately, we believe that activities such as implementing building codes need to be started to be viewed as a carrot, not as a stick. And if the incentives are appropriate, we think that can happen. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Kuhn, um, you mentioned FEMA's new customer service-centric focus for uh, the public assistance program as a positive step forward. Are there other actions FEMA could take with respect to the public assistance program in order to reduce disaster costs and even losses? Thank you, Ranking Member Carson. I believe that uh, <clears throat> continued implementation of some of the procedures that were highlighted in the Sandy Recovery Improvement Act uh, in ways that will help us expedite funding to the locals uh, could result in cost savings and improved recovery as we move forward. Uh, we are eager to continue to work with FEMA on this PA reengineering process to make sure that they are as customer-centric as possible in this situation. Uh, so that we can help, again, get those communities back up on their feet as quickly as possible at a, at a minimal cost to the federal government. Uh, with regards to the, the question you asked, uh, Mr. Mickey, earlier with regard to incentives, if I may, uh, we have done a very good job on providing incentives for programs. You mentioned the Enhanced Mitigation Program. There are incentive offer, uh, incentives offered through the National Flood Insurance Program, Community Rating System. There are incentives offered through the Sandy Recovery Improvement Act for debris removal. Uh, none of those 
I believe, have fully met what they intended to do. And so continual reevaluation of those incentive programs to determine why they are not being taken up uh, at the level we anticipate would be necessary, and then go back and improve the processes by which we implement those programs would help them meet uh, the, the maximum good that they were designed to uh, intend to uh, affect. <clears throat> Thank you. And um, Administrator Nimick, <clears throat> earlier this week the White House hosted a conference on resilient building codes. Included in the fact sheet um, issued by the White House, it stated that FEMA is developing a more detailed plan uh, to be put forth for additional public discussion uh, in a notice of proposed rulemaking. Has FEMA finished reviewing all the comments and arrived at determining that it will definitely go forward with rulemaking on disaster uh, deductible concepts? If so, uh, when can Congress and stakeholders expect the proposed rule to even be issued? Representative Carson, um, thank you for the question. Uh, the deductible process has been one where we've reached out heavily to the user group. And as Ms. Clark indicated, we've received over 150 very detailed responses to the advance notice of rulemaking. And we went through the advance notice of a rulemaking process in order to get that type of feedback that Ms. Clark indicated where there are concerns uh, that this might just be the ability to transfer costs from the federal government to state and then to local communities. The intent here is exactly what we've been talking about, to incentivize and make more consistent the ability for communities to invest in mitigation and preparedness capabilities. We are now going through those 150 comments to be able to come up with an actual proposed rule that will have details in it that we will then go out through the proposed rulemaking process to get specific comments back on those rules. We anticipate that that will be out sometime this calendar year, sir. Yeah. Thank you. And I don't know where we are on time, Mr. Chairman, but I yield back. 